everybody, Dear Really here, and today I'm going to tell you all about the quick shrink method for shrinking vinyl doll heads. Before trying this, please make sure to watch my introduction to shrinking video or read my webpage about it linked in the description to ensure that you understand some doll features that don't work with quick shrinking and some of the risks involved. There is a slow shrinking method that is much safer for the doll, so you could do that alternatively, though even that method has some things that can't be worked around and has its own risks as well. Also, safety first. Acetone is toxic, so you don't want to go purposely inhaling it or anything. It evaporates super fast though, so even if you're working in a small bathroom, all you have to do is just simply leave the door open and that's plenty of ventilation. Make sure to keep your acetone containers covered at all times, not just for your health, but also because you'll waste a lot of it if you don't. And like I said, it evaporates super fast and it'll just be gone before you know it. And lastly, in the safety category, make sure you keep your doll's bodies or anything else made of plastic out of your work area, because acetone melts most types of plastics. I'll do a demonstration about that later on. Getting down to it, let's start with the materials you'll need. Number one, obviously, a vinyl doll head. I've not run into a single doll that won't shrink. It doesn't matter how hard it is. I've shrunk Moxie Teens, Bratzillas, the 17-inch Monster High and Ever After High dolls. They all have pretty hard vinyl, and they all shrink just fine. Uh, number two, you need 100% acetone. Make sure that it's 100% pure and not some kind of conditioning nail polish remover or anything like that. Head shrinking is a bit of a sensitive chemical process, and any and all pollutants can alter your results or at least change the speed of the process. So you'll want to reduce any extraneous factors that you can. For best results, it's best to use a fresh solution for each soak, but you can reuse the same solution once on the third time, since many of the pollutants from the first soak will be gone. I use Onyx Professional. You'll need at least two 16-ounce bottles of it, though you'll want a third one if you want to use fresh solution for all three soaks. Number three, you'll need a glass jar, approximately 3.5 by 3.5 inches, uh, 16 ounce jars. With fast shrinking, the head will expand to fill that whole thing, as you can see in this picture. So it's the perfect size for the job. Do not try to use a 4 by 2 inch 8 ounce jar, as there is not enough room for expansion, and the vinyl will usually buckle in on itself and crack up, like this. And you don't want that. Number four, Q-tips or whatever you prefer to use to remove the paint from your doll's face, though I find Q-tips to be the easiest thing to use. If you need tips about removing your doll's face makeup, uh, I have a video up about that already and de-hairing. But yeah, remember, the makeup just melts right off in the acetone, so it's better to remove it ahead of time so it doesn't become a pollutant to slow the shrinking. Number five is optional polyester stuffing. Since the head gets all soft and jiggly when it's all blown up, as it shrinks, it doesn't always settle back into the same shape. The temples may shrink in more, or if you leave the face upward while it's drying, the face may flatten a little. So it can be good to put a little stuffing in the head while it's drying to keep it from deforming oddly. It doesn't have to be polyester stuffing. It can be any other kind of stuffing that won't be melted by acetone. So cotton would work too. All right, with that out of the way, let's get down to business. First step is to prep your doll for the process. As mentioned, it's a chemical process that can be rather sensitive, so you need to remove as many pollutants as possible ahead of time. And just like I said a minute ago, <laughs> remove the face paint because it just slides right off anyway. You don't want that in the mixture. If you're going to reroot your doll, remove the hair because that um, gets rid of the glue in the mixture and any pollutants that the hair itself might hold. If you do remove the hair, use some dishwashing liquid to wash the head and rinse it well. If it's still sticky after that from having too much glue in the head, then use some Goo Gone to wipe that off and wash it again. If you left the hair on, shampoo the hair and rinse it well. The shampoo cleans the head well enough too, so you don't have to wash it after shampooing it. Sometimes you'll run into dolls that actually have sticky hair from the glue having seeped out of the head and into the hair. You can use Goo Gone to fix that as well, but you may need to shampoo it more than once to make sure you get the Goo Gone all out of the hair because it's a bit of an oily substance. It's good to give the head a day to dry because even a little bit of water alters the process. But if you want to, you can go right ahead and start. The first soak just might be a little slower and less effective than the rest of them since you have some water in there. Now that you have a nice clean doll head though, step two, fill your jar with acetone and submerge the head in the acetone, making sure to get the inside filled up too. A two hour soak should be good enough, but I'd say to soak it for three hours just to be safe because extra time doesn't really hurt it. Step three, remove the head from the acetone. 
The head will be soft, jiggly, and fragile at this point, so you want to be careful taking it out. Try wrapping your fingers around it and lifting it out. Avoid grabbing and pulling the hair because, you know, depending on the weight that's on it at the time, you could end up tearing the scalp or tearing plugs out of the head or something like that. That's how fragile the vinyl can be sometimes. And gently squeeze the acetone out of the head back into the jar as much of it as you can. And very gently run the hair under the faucet to rinse some of the acetone out of it. But make sure not to pull on the hair. Then just set it aside to start drying. After about five or six hours, it should be more structurally sound, and you can rinse the hair a little bit better and wring it out. And if it looks like the head is deforming at all and shrinking, you can put the polyester stuffing inside the head now to keep it from caving in as it shrinks. But uh, you don't have to do that until the final shrink, but I think it's a good idea to do that in each shrink just in case so it doesn't become a problem later on. I always just do it in each step anyway, just in case. Just to be safe. Step four, deciding if you're going to do any more soaks. After about 22 hours after removing the head from the first soak, most of the acetone will have evaporated, though it won't be done shrinking or hardening yet. Finishing time greatly depends on the particular doll itself. It can be done in three days, or it can take up to three weeks. It depends on the exact chemical composition of the batch of vinyl used to create that head. Even two heads that look exactly alike can have different chemical differences. And unless you're a chemist that can take samples and break down and analyze them, there's no predicting exactly how long it's going to take. Depending on how much you want to shrink the head, now you have to guesstimate and decide if you want to do more soaks, and if you want to reuse old solution or dump that and use fresh solutions. If you're doing more soaks, if you use the stuffing, remove it from the head, which is pretty quick and easy with some tweezers or something similar, and you can put it back in the head for drying later on. Three soaks usually seems to get a head as small as it'll go. Some shrink a lot even after just one soak, though. Like I mentioned earlier, you can reuse the acetone, but I highly suggest using a fresh solution after at least the first soak, because most of the pollutants will come out in that one. When you took the head out from its first soak and squeezed the acetone out, you probably saw particles left over from the glue and bits of hair inside of the head come out with it. And most likely now there's a layer of sediment in the bottom of the jar. The solution also may be a little discolored if the hair had certain kinds of dye in it, or even the vinyl. Sometimes the dye in the vinyl will leach out into the acetone as well. So it's best to dump that out, rinse the jar, dry it with a paper towel, and pour some fresh acetone in for your next soak. Any further soaks you can use your best judgment on, eyeballing how the solution's looking and see how the shrinking process has been going for you thus far. Now for step five, the final drying. Personally, I like to do everything I can before the head is fully dry and hardened because it's more difficult to put on and take the head off when it's done. You can use a hairdryer to heat it up and soften it some, and that helps to a certain degree, but it's just simply easiest to get the head back on the body before it's totally solid again. After 24 hours, the head will be pretty stable and safe to make pretty much any modifications on. You'll have some time to reroute while it's still soft, though even if it's fully hardened, you can still reroute. And there's a little trick to that that I'll be making a video about a little bit later on. Yeah, after the shrinking videos, I'm going to do the rerouting and shrunken head video and then... Darn, I don't know if I want to do the reshaping or rerouting video first. Well, eh, if you have a preference, let me know in the uh, comments. Yeah, so besides rerouting, you can also reshape the head while it's shrinking. I call it pressurized reshaping. I'll put in a few pictures here of some of the setups I've done in the past to change the shape of the head as it was shrinking and drying. You have to keep adjusting it every few hours just to make sure it doesn't shift in some weird way and take on some uneven shape. Because a lot of what I've done with shrinking is the Ever After high heads, and they're so round, and I always wanted them to be more oval, so I would, you know, press them into a more oval shape as they were drying. But once the head's uh, fully dry and hard after that, you can do additional reshaping with the Dremel and or sandpaper files. Cause I usually do pretty drastic modifications, so I use a Dremel to drill large portions and then use files and sandpaper to soften it and sand it back down to smoothness. And that's something else that's going to be in a future tutorial. Like I said, let me know if you want to see reshaping or rerouting first. And also what you want to do is... Take an X-Acto blade to widen the neck hole inside a little bit so that even after the head is fully dried, that will make it a little bit easier to take the head off and put it back on the body. 
careful not to trim too much or it won't hold well at the top and the neck will just fall down as far as possible and your doll will permanently be shrugging. You also need to trim the anchor on the body or it will be nearly impossible to ever get the head off again. And I'm showing you here some footage of me trimming the anchor. You need to trim the uh, the wings off and you need to trim around that, uh, that little circular bottom of the anchor. I use a flush cutter and it cuts through it like butter very easily. I just have a little bit difficult time doing it with a camera strapped to my chest. Oh yeah, this doll's not quite done shrinking yet. Uh, she's probably going to be like another two or three days. So she's mostly finished her shrinking, but she's still a tiny bit squishy and not quite done yet. But you can see she's done the majority of her shrinking. This one's a little bit slow. I think she'll probably take another week. I also usually push the head down a little bit further on the neck instead of leaving it at the very top of the neck because when you leave it at the top, since the head's smaller now, it looks the neck looks a little bit too long if you leave it at the top. And maybe that's just me, but I just think she looks a little bit more proportionate if you push the head down a little tiny bit. Alright, so next tutorial up will be slow shrinking, which is the method that I highly recommend if you're going to shrink heads. But that's fast shrinking method if you're a mad scientist like me and really just like trying everything out. And actually most of the tutorials that I plan on doing uh, are already up on my website in written form if you'd like to visit www.dirilli.com, D-I-R-I-L-I.com. And uh, like I said, they're all written there, although some of them need to be updated because they're pretty much written like a year ago. And I've learned a lot of things and I have new information to share. Most of which is in these videos, but yeah, they, those written ones need to be fixed up some. So yeah, that's it for fast shrinking here. Hope to see you soon for slow shrinking. Hopefully it'll be out in the same day. I'd be so grateful to see you there or in some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, subscriptions, or such. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye bye everybody, and happy head shrinking!